Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve. Today in part two of our camshaft video, I'm going to start going over camshaft cores and the size of the core, which dictates the size of the lobe, which has all the bearing on the lobe profile and the lobe design. So I got uh, some interesting stuff here, everything from uh, the standard core small block Chevy all the way up to some really exotic 70 millimeter core stuff and I'll explain what's all going on with there in this part two of the camshaft video. So I'm gonna jump on the other side of the camera here and then start showing you uh, all the stuff on these cams. All right, so let's look at our, our first sample cam and got a couple different things to discuss and look at. It's pretty interesting too. Uh, so this is a standard core, just a standard core, solid roller, small block Chevrolet. So notice the, and by standard core, we made standard bearing size. So standard bearing size and the standard core, which is right here. See this little yellow band or little copper band right there? That's the actual core size. This is journal size. Now all these things dictate uh, how much lobe and what kind of lobe we can actually put on here. So what you'll always notice is Let's make sure you can see here is that this lobe, the peak lift right here, the lobe is always just like about 10 thousandths below the cam journal size. So if you want to, and that is something that has to be that way in order for all the math to work out properly and for the lifter to be in a proper location into the lifter bore, all that good stuff, this peak lift has to be right there. So you only have so much room between here and the center of the core. So to get more lift here, you would have to take it off the base circle to make it effectively have more lift here. All right. Then there's other issues that involved with the small block Chevrolet stuff with big connecting rods hitting the connect or hitting the crank camshaft and uh, anything usually over three and a quarter inch stroke in a aluminum rod definitely will come up here and hit it and then even with like four inch stroke stuff usually the steel rod will hit the camshaft making you have a smaller base circle which really makes this nasty little lobe right there now let's look over here so this is standard core standard small block chevy here is standard core big block chevy now you do notice obviously it's taller and uh what you would figure that's taller up here let's see oops sorry that's taller right up here and obviously you can see that but larger journal and a little bit larger core everything's always the same right here you can see the the lifter is or i'm sorry the uh, the lobe lift is right equal with the journal diameter now what we normally would do here, putting 55 millimeter stuff, or you know, going to the next size bigger core in a small block Chevrolet is kind of hard because it keeps on making this core size bigger and the lobe bigger, physically larger. And I'll explain that here in just a second. And then it hits connecting rods. That's why you'd have a raised camshaft, raised deck surface, etc., etc. Big block Chevys aren't nearly as bad, but they also have a raised cam because you'll also get into problems with the connecting rods hitting the back of the cam lobe. So, we normally would go into 55 millimeter core in big block Chevys. It's always better. Is it necessary? No. Standard core stuff and like a 540, I mean, we can make 3,000 horsepower plus with it. That's not a big deal, but bigger is always better. I'll tell you why I just meant. Now, one reason why bigger is always better is the smaller this core, imagine all the pressure with springs and lobe or springs on a lobe lifter, the camshafts actually will twist. That is a fact. Marginal, but they will twist. Um, so the larger core obviously rigids that up, keeps things from possibly even having slight deflection and bending, you know, from the downward force here on the lifter. Uh, but definitely more in a twisting motion. So let me show you something that's a little interesting here. So here's our the typical small block Chevrolet. So typical small block Chevrolet. I'll move this big block out of the way. And I had never really even paid attention. I've been doing this for a lot of years and never really grasped the whole thing to really look at it. You notice how much shorter this camshaft is 
This is a LS. What is interesting is if you hold it here, the center three journals are in basically the same position. All the lobes are in the same position. It literally is a difference in between you have a fuel pump drive up here and you have a distributor gear down here, which makes the entire camshaft longer. Doesn't really mean anything, but I just thought it was actually interesting because I never really noticed it until I set them right side by side. Now what the, the, uh, the better difference is of why LS is, uh, honestly, hate to kill you all, you, get, you small box Chevy guys, but LS's are just better. Do you see, this is just one of the reasons. See how much more sturdy this camshaft is? All LS camshafts are 55 millimeter. Has bigger core. Notice how much larger this lobe is to this lobe. This lobe right here is a uh, 417 lobe, so it has 0 0.417 lift at the lobe. So you multiply it out by your rock arm ratio for valve lift. This is this great, much larger lobe is only 380 thousandths of lift at the lobe. So that brings in our big topic here of why a, uh, a why the larger core camshafts are better. Now, as we'd have to make this little lobe more aggressive, it's just this real little small lobe. So I'm trying to simplify this as much as possible. I mean, there's a little bit of more science involved in it. But just basically thinking of it, we make this lobe have more lift, be more aggressive compared to this big, smooth lobe. You start seeing why large core camshafts are just better. They allow, in basic nutshell is, they allow the lifter to move more smoothly, um, act better, be better, however you wanna put it. Um, you can have it, the lobe be more aggressive without it being more aggressive, if that makes any sense. I hope that makes sense. So, that is a, a big deal. So if that 55 millimeter camshaft versus a standard core. Now, I'm gonna start showing you, and so let's backtrack just a little bit. You got twist, the bigger core, but primarily that bigger lobe. And if you go back and watch like the lifter videos, I talk about the bigger wheel on uh, lifters. That all goes with bigger lobe profiles. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you some other stuff. Uh, here is, this one is interesting too. Look at that cute little bugger. Isn't that, I mean, it's like, but this thing doesn't weigh two pounds. That is a overhead overhead camshaft, overhead uh, valve camshaft, overhead cam, sorry, camshaft for Lamborghini. So this is part of our Lamborghini programs. Um, you can see here, the low profile, if you can, I don't know if I can really see that, but how s gentle and mild that is. It's, it's probably a little hard to see, but I apologize about that but really smooth, really easy, but it's because you don't need much lift. You have four valves per cylinder. And so the profiles of the camshaft are significantly different. But just something interesting. I mean, look how thin, how light that is, but very minimal spring pressure. There's a lot of journal size here. So there's a journal here, journal here, journal here, journal there. So there's not much uh, deviation, uh, much allowed for twist or anything like that. So now, that's just a little side note. I thought you'd find that interesting. Now here, this is, this camshaft right here, this is the Mac Daddy, because it's mine. This is out of a SMX. So this is 65 millimeter. Notice the lobe profile. Lobe is always right there. All right. 65 millimeter camshaft of glory. All right, that thing is, really large really large core um don't have any twists any de any flex bend anything of the, that nature really allows us to have this great big lobe right there so let me compare this to i mean now that obviously this will make uh 5, horsepower 
this camshaft is your standard big block Chevrolet camshaft. Pretty easy to see the size difference in between these two. See how big that is in the journal and the core size. Journal and core size. Hence, we get to have a much smoother profile with a much larger camshaft. Now, I'm actually gonna tell you what specs this camshaft uh, is at. This camshaft right here, this one, in, a, in one of my either 525 or 540 or one of my 572 SMXs, um, turbo, twin turbo function, they'll make 45 to 5,000 horsepower. I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, with this is a 500 lobe. That means that we have 500 thousandths of lift at the lobe out here. With a 1.7 rocker, it's 860 lift. So 860 lift is all it takes to make close to 5,000 horsepower. It does not take an inch of lift. It is not huge, massive lift, stuff like that. It's just not. So that's a little bit of inside information there. I'm not gonna tell you every single spec on, on, uh, on my camshaft here uh, for the SMX, but that just gives you a really good illustration of the core size, the journal size, this is 65 millimeter, the huge low profile and how it makes the lifter roll smoothly while it's still a more aggressive lobe. So makes the valve move more aggressively but keeps the lifter uh, moving less aggressively as compared to a 500 lobe. And you can do it. You can put a 500 lobe on a big block Chevrolet. Uh, this is 420 lobe, but you can put a 500 lobe on these and it is just this like, I mean, just like really fast. Where this and a 500 lobe is like this. Okay, kind of give you an illustration. Open, close. 500 lobe on here, open, close. You get the point? Now, another interesting one right here. This is an even larger camshaft. This is for a Hemi pro big Hemi project I have going on here. This camshaft is a 70 millimeter cam. So 70 millimeter, so that's two, two and three quarter inch diameter. Uh, 65 is like a two, uh, Sorry, wasn't prepared for the math here, like two, probably two six hundred something. <clears throat> two, yeah, two six hundred something, two five hundred and fifty or something like that. But anyways, 70 millimeter core. So it even has a larger lobe yet. Uh, these have other valve train issues that are really complicated to get into, but um, you know, there, there, there's a lot going on here with something like this camshaft. Um, and you can see here, it's also interesting, you only have two lobes in between this journal and this journal. And we don't, you'd have two here. This is the rear journal, so you have four, 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 four. Here you have two, four, 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 two. So interesting little uh, little deal there. And it's just the, the back spacing uh, makes it do this way, way down here, the back spacing. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, this is something you know what we talk about when you say large core and when i ask uh for custom core designs uh or i'm sorry custom camshaft designs that's why i ask what camshaft core is your block set up for what lifter bore is your block set up for so we can have the proper lobe so i know what i have to design in the lobe in order to be uh, maximum effectiveness maximum efficiency all that good stuff so Larger cores are always better. Uh, 70 millimeter core is impossible to get into a conventional big block Chevrolet, can't happen. 65 millimeter core is really impossible to get into a conventional big block Chevrolet. You'd have to do a raised cam because stuff gets so big here. You know, the core gets so big, it hits the connecting rods. So you'd have to have a raised cam to do it. Waste of time, just stick with a 55 millimeter standard stuff. Easier cores to get. Um, just as effective uh, in that application you have to get into any of the custom billet stuff in order really to get a 65 or 70 millimeter camshaft core so anyways some real interesting stuff uh, now we're going to go over 
uh, actual a little more on the low profiles now that you understand how we uh, uh, can go about designing the low profiles based on what the core is so this part two uh, we're gonna go over and start shooting uh, part three